everyone, welcome back to Demetra's Dishes. Today I'm going to be bringing to you a very delicious and show-stopping main course. I'm going to teach you how to make my Mediterranean style crowned rack of lamb. It's going to be delicious. I know some people are intimidated by it just because it looks so fancy and it is pretty fancy. Perfect for your guests that you're going to be, if you're going to be hosting Easter this year or any kind of get together really, this is good all year long. I'm gonna break it down and show you just how easy it can be. I'm gonna serve mine with my Mediterranean rice pilaf, but you can serve this with anything and we'll get to that when we get to it. First, let's go over the ingredients so we could start making this beauty. So for the marinade, we're gonna need some olive oil, red wine vinegar, some dried oregano, lots and lots of peeled garlic, some cumin powder, salt, pepper, and fresh rosemary. And then the star of our show are these racks of lamb. Now I'm using two, but you can use three if you feel so inclined. Just make sure that you buy them and they're already French. If not, have your butcher do it. We're gonna go ahead and marinate this first. You can marinate this up to two days ahead of time. The more you let it sit marinating in these herbs and spices, the better it's gonna taste but these are also very potent and you can do this last minute where you're gonna marinate it and then uh, bake it off the same day. Let's go ahead and start making this marinade. So to my, red, to my red wine vinegar, I'm gonna go ahead and add some olive oil and then I'm gonna grate all of this garlic in here using my microplane grater just because it makes it super fine. Lots of garlic means lots of flavor, so you don't wanna skimp out on this. This is gonna really flavor it beautifully. Now we're gonna finally chop some rosemary. Rosemary and lamb just go together. And now for some earthiness, we're gonna add a little bit of cumin powder, a heaping spoonful of oregano, and then some salt. And I'm just gonna mix this all up with a spoon. And I'm just gonna pour this all over both of my lamb racks. With your hands, make sure you get it all around the front and the back everywhere. And at this point, you can just cover this with some plastic wrap and keep it in your refrigerator for a couple of hours, overnight, or up to two days. And then just make sure before you're about to roast it, when you take it out, leave it at room temperature for a little while. You never want to roast cold meat. But I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to go ahead and put this in my refrigerator. So once your lamb marinates, you want to take it out and then season it with some salt and some black pepper. Even though the marinade has some salt in it, you just wanna make sure that it's seasoned really well. So just sprinkle some, some salt on top like you would on top of your eggs in the morning. Then flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Now, in order to make this dish, you're gonna need a bunt pan. So take out a bunt pan, cause that's what the lamb racks are gonna sit in here to help them bake evenly and to hold their flavor. Now we're gonna tie it up and it's really not that hard. So you're gonna take some kitchen twine and just connect the two ribs together and then take a lot, you're gonna need a lot more kitchen twine. You need about two to three feet for this next part and just wrap it all around. First you're gonna start loosely and then as it starts to hold its shape, wrap it just a little tighter so that way it can hold together. Go back up with the string to connect both sides so that way it forms a crown. Then go ahead and put it in your bunt pan along with all the remaining juices that are from the marinade. Now we're gonna go in and season with lots and lots of oregano all around. So with some foil, we're just gonna go ahead and cover the bones on top so that way they don't burn. My oven is preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna put it in there and I'm gonna let it cook for about 30 to 35 minutes. Once the, once the internal temperature registers to 130 degrees Fahrenheit using a meat thermometer, then that's how you know it's ready if you like it rare. If you like it cooked a little bit more than that, then go ahead and cook it a little bit longer. Around 135 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit is medium and that's the way I like it. But again, cook it to your liking. I'm gonna show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. But once it comes out, you're gonna to wanna to cover the whole thing with foil and just let it rest for about 10, 15 minutes so all the juices can get redistributed. So while my lamb is roasting in the oven, I'm gonna make a Mediterranean rice pilaf. It's lemony, it's light, it's bright, and it's the perfect it's the perfect thing to serve alongside the lamb. I've made this on the channel before with vermicelli. Today I'm gonna to be using orzo pasta. Let's go over those ingredients and then we're gonna start making it. Some olive oil, salt, pepper, lots of fresh lemon juice, some unsalted butter, some orzo pasta, or you could use vermicelli, 
chicken stock or chicken broth, fresh parsley, and some rice. So my rice has been soaking for 30 minutes. All I did was I rinsed it four or five times until the water ran clear. I'm gonna go ahead and strain this, but before I do that, in my pot right here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some olive oil and butter. And just, I'm, I'm gonna cook this over medium high heat until the butter melts. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse I'm not rinse, I'm gonna strain the water out of my rice. Once the butter is melted, I'm gonna go in and add my orzo pasta and just stir it until it's lightly toasted, about a minute or two. Then I'm gonna go in and add my rice, my lemon juice, the chicken broth, salt and pepper. I'm gonna mix it well and let it come to a boil. And then I'm gonna let it boil for a couple of minutes until the water level reduces and you're gonna see a lot of bubbles popping up. At that point, I'm going to give the rice another mix, cover it with the lid, cover the pan with the lid and let it simmer for 15 minutes and I'm not gonna touch it. Then I'm gonna go in and fluff it up and the rice is ready. My rack of lamb is resting. I like mine more towards the medium well side. You make yours however you like. Keep in mind, if you keep a meat thermometer, especially if it's oven safe, a meat thermometer in there, you can gauge it to the and, and cook it to the doneness that you like. 130 degrees Fahrenheit is for rare. 135 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit is uh, well, it is, no sorry, is medium. And then once it sits in, and it rests, the temperature is gonna rise some more. Like I said, make it to however you like it. We're gonna make a little dressing to go on top of that. So what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of balsamic vinegar because it has that really nice sweetness to it. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of Greek honey in it. And then I'm gonna chop up some fresh rosemary. I'm gonna put some cold pressed Greek extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of salt. And then I'm gonna whisk this all up. And when I transfer my rack of lamb to my platter, I'm gonna take all those pan juices and add those to the dressing too and just whisk them all up together. And then I'm just gonna pour it on top and it's gonna glaze the lamb and deepen the flavor and it's just gonna be out of this world delicious. So go ahead and put a layer of rice into your ser serving dish, then go ahead and put the rack of lamb on top of that. Carefully cut out the strings, cut off the strings I should say, and then fill the center with more rice. If you're using something else like roasted vegetables or mashed potatoes or even roasted potatoes, you can do the same thing. Put a layer of roasted potatoes on the bottom and then fill it in the center. Make sure that whatever you're filling it is nice and warm so it keeps the lamb warm for a while so that way your guests can enjoy it warm like that. Then go ahead and transfer the dressing that you made with the balsamic vinegar and the honey into another little serving dish so that way your guests can pour as much as they want on top of their lamb. And now I'm gonna go in and give it a taste. Mmm. You guys, this combination is delicious. I would give this a try before you try any other sides. The, the lamb is so moist, so tender, so juicy. The rosemary and the garlic have just perfumed it. I think your guests are gonna love it. I would say the only other thing that I would serve with this if I wasn't serving this rice would be maybe some spanakorizo, which is my spinach and rice pilaf. I'll go ahead and post all the links up in the card section for you. Go ahead and print this recipe over at www.demetrisdishes.com. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I will see you all next time. Yes, us.